Hi, my name is James Tracy. I'm a master club fitter here at Second Swing, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about spin. And spin is a huge element in any club fitting. Every single one of your golf clubs has some type of spin. All of your clubs, minus the putter when you're rolling it and hitting a nice, well struck putt, will have backspin. And the right amount of backspin to complement the way that you hit the ball is going to help you achieve better distance help you achieve more consistency, and help you achieve the ball flight that's gonna allow you to score better. So let's talk about spin. Let's work our way from the green and work our way back to the tee. So let's talk about your putter, for example. Most golfers aren't thinking about how the ball spins with their putter, but it's essentially crucial at having better distance control and getting the ball to stay on line, having the right amount of spin. The loft of the putter is exceptionally crucial at creating the right amount of spin. You don't want backspin on the putter. So engineering the loft, the head style, and the impact position to promote an early forward roll right off the face of the club is crucial in trying to get that ball to hug the grass as it makes its way towards the hole. Hitting the ball with a slightly open or closed club face or a little bit off center can also tilt that ball's access a little bit which causes it to spin a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, and that can bleed your putts offline. So looking at putter design, the centeredness of the strike, the proper lie angle, and most importantly, the right loft will ensure that you're getting the right amount of spin or the right amount of roll with your putter to give you better distance control and allow your ball to stay rolling on its intended line, which hopefully leads to more putts. Obviously with your wedges, Spin is crucial. Spin is a way that we control the distance that we're hitting our shots. And when you're using your wedges more than any of one of the other golf clubs, the environment you're using your wedges in is constantly changing. Different lies, different distances, different conditions, different places you're trying to land your golf ball, different heights you're trying to hit your golf ball. And all of those things you're able to control with the amount of spin that you have. So if you're a player that has a 50, 54, 58, those three wedges can hit the same type of golf shot. You can use them in the same way, but by having four degrees of loft in between, predictably you're going to see more spin with the 58 compared to the 54 compared to the 50. So selecting the wedge that has the appropriate amount of spin for the shot is important in trying to save some strokes around the green. As you play more golf, your wedges tend to lose a little bit of spin. We call it spin decay. And it's usually after about a hundred rounds, especially with your sand and lob wedge that get put through the harshest of elements, bunkers, divots. You use them a lot, especially if you're like me and miss the green. Those wedges tend to wear out the soonest. So when you buy a brand new 58 degree wedge, you might see a ball that one hop grabs. And after a hundred rounds, that same shot executed the same way, one hop and releases. And that can influence how uh, much control and how consistent you are at getting your chip shots nestled close to the hole. So paying attention to the wear and tear on your grooves, as those grooves start to lose their geometry and get a little bit worn, you're going to start to see a little bit less spin, especially when you're hitting shots out of the rough. So keeping your wedges updated and having crisp, nice, clean edges to your grooves is going to ensure that you can control the spin and save your round by hitting those crucial up and down shots with your wedges. With irons, spin also plays a huge role in our club fittings. Irons have gotten a lot stronger, right? There's pitching wedges out there that are less than 43 degrees even in 2020. So looking at spin is an important thing in a fitting because we're trying to figure out what combination of spin helps a player hit the ball a little bit longer without giving up that stopping power and that control that you're going to want when you're hitting approach shots into the green. So depending on your speed, depending on the launch angle that you have off the face, the peak height that you can reach, is going to dictate how much spin you need with that particular iron to hold the green and to be consistent. Less spin with your irons will make the golf ball go further. But it comes at a penalty if you scrub too much spin because now that golf ball is coming in hot with not a lot of stopping power and that can make it difficult to control the distance, especially when you're coming out of the rough. We've all hit that career shot with our 8-iron right out of the center of the face. And the second that we hit it, we know it's airborne and we know it's airmailed over the green. And that's because there's no spin. It's a knuckleball and it's got a mind of its own. So making sure your irons have the right amount of spin. Not too much, 
not too little, but the right range of spin will help you execute shots from the fairway and the rough and have really predictable distances no matter what iron you have in your hand as you come into the green. Loft is one way we look at irons to determine how much spin you might be able to predict. Certain brands tend to spin more than others and those are things that as club fitters we've measured over thousands and thousands of fittings to see how different irons in the same category might compare. So a player that is looking for more spin we know which irons tend to spin more. Player that's looking for more distance, hits the ball really high, overspins the ball. We know which irons are going to tend to scrub that spin a little bit better. So we can narrow your search down uh, by just simply knowing club design in that way. Another way, place that spin plays a role is that tough decision at the, at the long part of your bag. Do I play a driving iron? Should I carry a three iron? What about a three hybrid? What about a five wood? All those clubs might have 18, 19 degrees of loft. So how do I determine which one of those options is right for me? Well, spin is part of that decision-making process. A fairway wood at 19 degrees versus a hybrid at 19 degrees versus an iron at 19 degrees, even though the loft is the same, because of the head design, you're gonna see more spin on a fairway wood than a hybrid compared to an iron as you're hitting it with the same amount of loft. So in another way to say that, in an iron at 19 degrees will fly the lowest with the least amount of spin. Hybrid in the middle, fairway wood with the highest trajectory. So depending on the way you're using that club, if I'm hitting approach shots, I have a low ball flight, I need that ball to stop on my target, you might hedge more towards a fairway wood. If you already have a high ball flight and your goal from that yardage is to keep it low, keep it running, keep it under the wind, keep it penetrating, you might hedge more towards an iron design at that loft to keep that spin and that peak trajectory a little bit lower. So spin will help you make those decisions in the long part of your game to create the right gapping and the right type of shot uh, for that distance that you play from. And then we get to the driver. You know, a lot of consumers, a lot of customers over the last couple years that come in for fittings, golfers are aware that spin is a huge element for distance. So lots of technology. If you look back to the last several generations of drivers, every year drivers seem to be getting a little bit lower spinning. And golf companies know the way to make the golf ball go further, especially a launch monitor, is to help fitters give golfers the right amount of spin. You can't have a driver with too little spin. There is a downside to lowering the spin too much. That spin helps keep the ball in the air. If you don't have enough spin, you have a knuckleball that has no control. Spin helps keep that ball up flight up in the air. Players with more speed and more launch angle can get away with lower spin rates, but for most of us, we need the right amount of spin with our driver especially to maximize our carry distance. And then the right amount of spin so that when it does hit the ground and it starts its descent angle, it's not landing like your sand wedge. It's landing and bouncing and running and hopefully helping you achieve your longest drives. So when you're measuring backspin on a launch monitor or you're talking about spin with a fitter, make sure you're thinking about the ball flight that you have and the goals that you have with that club. It's not all about finding the least amount of spin or the most amount of spin. Sometimes it's finding the most predictable amount of spin and the corresponding spin rates that's going to match the type of shot you're trying to hit with the type of club you're using for that particular shot. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have questions on spin, if you have questions on loft, if you have questions on comparing one club to another, especially in, uh, in, in regards to the amount of spin that that club might produce for your type of swing, give us a call. Jump online and schedule a phone call consultation or an online video fitting with one of the master fitters here at Second Swing like myself today. And we'd be happy to walk you through some of those uh, challenging decisions that you might make and hopefully find clubs that have the right spin rate to give you better performance out on the course.